digital information technology is a revolution in copying, just as the printing press was a revolution in copying. Before the printing press, the only way to copy something was with a pen and ink. And so anyone who could read could also make copies. Uh, and anyone could copy about as fast as anyone else. And if you wanted to make 10 copies, that took you about 10 times as long as one copy. Then the printing press came along and it made copying more efficient, but not uniformly, because making many identical copies was much more efficient. Anything else was just as it had been before. But only people with certain specialized equipment, the press and the type, could actually do this efficient copying. So the social arrangements of copying changed completely. Instead of it being something that any reader would do on occasion, it became something done in a centralized place. There were, there were printers, and printers would make copies of things. The development of digital technology makes copying more efficient in exactly the places that the printing press didn't. So we went from this to this with the printing press, and digital technology brings us up to here. Now anybody with a computer can make copies about as in efficiently as anyone else, and making one copy at a time is about as efficient as making many copies. So once again, we're in a situation where everyone can copy. But the institutions, the companies that grew up and became powerful based on being the only ones that could copy, want to remain the only ones that can copy. So they are trying to make it impossible for the rest of society to make use of this technology to do what it's naturally good at, which is copying. That's why we see attempts to put people in prison or find them more money than they have just because they were sharing with other people. Now this is evil in its purest form. To tell people to, that they can't share with each other, to tell people not to help each other, this is not the, gr the greatest evil, but it's the purest evil in the world. Digital divide. Well, it helps in reduce the digital divide, but it doesn't automatically make it go away. It removes one artificial obstacle to access to computers for poor people. But it doesn't automatically make the computers appear or the net connections appear. The computers you can get, I guess, because so many are being thrown out. You can get used computers and put them into service. You still have to arrange the net connections somehow. So it doesn't eliminate completely the cost of giving everyone internet access, but greatly reduces it. So it helps. But I think that's a secondary issue. You see, if you don't have a computer, if you have no access to a computer, you're safe from the problem of non-free software. Your freedom is not being trampled. Once you have access to a computer, then, the, then you face that potential problem. So just having access to a computer isn't necessarily a good thing, not if you're using it with non-free software. 